Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Labyrinth. I am your favorite Dungeon Master DM Andy and today I'm gonna build a spaceship. In this episode I'm gonna take a bunch of broken stuff from around my house and I'm gonna build myself a Battle Brother Armored Personnel Carrier. Sir, reinforcements have arrived. The ship is landing now. I had this old TV laying around the house, so I took the bottom two corners off of it that covered the speakers. I'm going to use them as the hull for my ship. I cut down this thin piece of plastic. I'm going to use it as the roof of my ship in between the two TV sections. I'm going to hot glue these three sections together, and it's going to make up the bulk of my ship. I'm using hot glue to get the shapes in place, and later I'm going to go back over it with some super glue and baking soda. When I was coming up with the idea for this video, I really wanted it to look like a drop ship, so the Space Marines come charging in after dropping in through the atmosphere. I know Space Marines already have drop pods, but I like the idea of a big transport that can carry a rhino. Or maybe a squad of Outrider bikes. I just want it to be able to carry more than just your standard tiny Space Marines. And I figure if you're not into the homebrew stuff for 40k or one page rules, you would at least like this as a centerpiece, just a big hunk of terrain for your game. And give that hot glue just a few minutes to set up, and there you have it. You have the hole for a drop ship for 40k, one page rules, or even Star Wars games. I have all these pink tubes laying around the house, so I cut one in half, and I'm going to use it as the engines on the side of the ship. I'm just going to spread a little hot glue down one side. I'm not going to go all the way to the edges, because I don't want a bunch of hot glue running all over the place messing up the model. If you do get a little messy with the hot glue on these, don't worry, it'll just look like welds after we paint everything. And once I got those attached, I wanted to put some strips on the outside engines, um, just something to give them a little characteristic, make them stand out a little more. The more edges and seams we put on the model, the better it's gonna paint up. I just got out my little paper cutting tool and I cut down some strips of cardstock, food box cardstock, and then I pre-measured and bent around these engines, these pink tubes, and I just glued that on with hot glue as well. In my last few videos, I've made a lot of stuff, but I've used a lot of Warhammer bits to get away with having detailed pieces. So in this one, I decided I'm not going to use anything out of my Warhammer bits. I'm just going to make stuff out of things I can find around the house. Which brings me to these small green juice lids. Um, I've seen other videos where they use them and they look like cool little hover engines. But the more I looked at them, the more it looked like a bug to me, like a big ladybug with green eyes staring back at me. So I end up tearing those off and putting something else on there. I cut down a few thicker pieces of the cardstock because I wanted to cover up the seam where all the hot glue had protruded out underneath on the ship. No one's really going to see it, but I just like the idea of covering up as much as I can when I'm working. Next, I took this piece of hose that came off a... Uh, one of those stand-up pools for the backyard. Uh, the filter quit working last summer, so I just took this extra piece of hose I had and I cut it down and I glued it right inside of those pink tubes so that part of it sticks out to build, to build up your engine compartment. Then I made some half circle end caps for this little piece of hose and I just attached that with a hot glue gun as well just to cover up the opening on the end. I just cut these half circles out of a little bit of cardstock with a pair of scissors. They, they don't have to be perfect. You just don't want to leave any gaps down the hose. Then I took some of those thin strips from earlier and I made an end cap for the end of this, this filter hose. Um, just the cap on the end looked good, but I think this extra piece wrapped around the outside edge really gave it a lot more character. Then I just repeated that on the other engine too. Um, from there, I went through my bits bag and I dug out these little kid, I don't know, gear star connector builder set things. Um, you guys have seen these on lots of videos. People use them for all kinds of stuff. But I just cut two of them in half and I glued them on the front of the engine. And now on to some tedious stuff. I, I took some tiny beads and I put them on as rivets. Uh, I just picked different spots on the ship where I thought rivets would look cool. And one of those places was that strip 
that I put on the motor. I'm just using an X-Acto knife and I pick up a little glue with the knife, then pick up one of the beads, rub the bead through the glue one time, and then just slowly work with it to situate them into place. All right, and since this is going to be some kind of drop ship, I needed some kind of staircase. And one of the things I had laying around were these old razor cartridges. Uh, when you buy razors here in America, they're expensive and they come in these little plastic containers. But if you turn them just right and look at them, they're a staircase. So I just took a Dremel and I cut them down so that they would fit right. At first, I thought I wanted a handrail, but I ended up cutting those off and putting a second staircase on. For landing gears, I just use these leftover, these are leftover pieces from windshield wiper blades. Uh, when you buy universal windshield wiper blades, they come with extra little parts if you don't use them on your car. So I just super glued those into place on the bottom. I think they look awesome as landing gear. That little bottle I'm using to spray on the model, that is baking soda mixed with water so that the super glue attaches almost instantly. It's like concrete. Um, I just put a little super glue on, hold the piece in place, and then spray it with a little solution and it hardens immediately. And this is pretty much a perfect technique for when you've got to attach something but there's very little surface area to make the contact. Just like on the front of these stairs. Just used a little super glue, a little baking soda and water, and it instantly hardened onto the front of the ship. And just a little size comparison while I play with my Marines, and then we'll move on to the next step. Here I'm going to take Lego blocks, and I'm going to cut the little round tabs off. Uh, I'm going to cut down some cardstock to cover that up, but first I'm going to sand the Legos so that the top of them is nice and smooth. Uh, just make sure you cut off any excess. Uh, the more you cut off, the less sanding you have to do. I'm just using a piece of 150 grit sandpaper here. Um... Just something I had around the house to make it easier to manipulate these Legos. Uh, once I've got the tops on, um, I just used a little bit of super glue. Then I glue them to the top of my ship in different spots. Uh, they look like different components on, on the model. And now I just keep adding stuff to the top of the model. Um, these are little punch outs from board games. Uh, these days when you buy board games, they come with all kinds of little different shaped punch outs. So I just hang on to that stuff and use it for my model building. Um, I ran a piece of wire between those two boxes just to make it look like something. Added a few more pieces. As you can see, I cut a credit card right in half and just stuck it on the top and then put a few more of those punch outs on it to give it different layers like when you look at spaceships in different movies, they've always got all these features and seams and raised up components all over the ship. Just stack your pieces however you want, wherever you want them. Um, I like to work in threes with little circles. Uh, three is a magic number. Uh, you can go over the History Channel and watch weird, weird documentaries about the number three. But uh, once I've got all that together, I took it outside and I base coated it with flat black spray paint, just like I always do. I actually spent most of the crafting time while I did this ship watching old episodes of Ancient Aliens from the History Channel over on YouTube, uh, trying to get some inspiration to put this together and make it look as cool as I can. Then back in the old crafting cubicle, I pulled out my favorite Battle Brother Blue and I just painted this entire ship blue. Um, I play Ultramarines, so this is going to be an Ultramarine ship. Then, as always, on to some silver paint. I had glued in a G.I. Joe backpack inside that panel to make it look, you know, make it look cool. And I just dry brushed that silver, the banding silver, the engine compartments. I just went over everything that was metal and shined it up real good. Here's a look at my ship spinning on my tabletop. You guys, I had a lot of fun building this ship, and I'm going to have even more fun using it in my game. Um... If you like this and you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe and join me next week. Um, I try to create content as often as possible. Some days I do it every three days. Other times it takes me a week. Here's a few glamour shots of my new armored personnel carrier. And as you can see, a rhino fits in it. As always, I am your favorite Dungeon Master, DM Andy, and I love doing this for you guys. So please, please keep up the support, and I will see you next time.